Yo, 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 how's it going, people? All is well. And today I feel it's time to review a couple of games that I felt were kind of interesting and is also, in general, something to look at and just um, try to understand. I feel with these events going, Tata Steel, these events where Levy is playing, Levy Rosman and uh, James Canty, there are some games that I feel re like uh, deserves a review and uh, not because they're so great, but because you can learn from it. So really what I'm hoping to do, apart from other things, is to do a bit of review and also, if you just pop on in, decide what to look at, what games to consider, or just, you know, focus on. Now, the hardest part in chess is really getting to winning position and also to survive bad positions. It is all about survival. So... In some respect, survival instincts in chess is somewhat undervalued for some people, but mostly people just don't know um, how important that is. Miles of Danger, thank you for subscribing for nine monthies. Thank you for teaching us. You're welcome. Glad you are enjoying your stay here. So yeah, um, apart from that, obviously, everything's according to plan tomorrow. It's going to be a 3-2 unrated uh, sub-battle. So it's going to be 3-2 sub-battle versus Sephru. Um, she is actually having her Twitch anniversary. Hopefully, um, uh, join the party and hopefully, um, you know, the desired result is going to get shown. Now, um, all I'm trying to say here, and with that, I think I'm going to start off with this game. Let's see if I actually have it. Yeah, it's this one. So this game was played by Levy. Levy is black. And um, there are a couple of things that I think we can have as a takeaway. And there is another game I felt was very interesting and something we can learn from. B4, C6. I'm actually pro this choice by Levy. He's been a Karo Khan aficionado for a long while. And if you're getting back into your chess, you're getting back to playing um, classical. If you're getting back to classical play lines that you have been playing before and don't try to just um, freestyle it. Not, not saying that freestyling it is necessarily bad, but there is a good chance it is. So c6, great choice. d4, d5, f3, e6. This is a weird looking move. But in chess, there's a couple of things that is interesting. If your opponent makes weird moves, you are entitled to a weird move yourself. That is for that reason. If white plays the weird move f4, which weakens the king, black is entitled to a weird move, which weakens the pawns over here. However, it's an extra pawn, so there is compensation. There is that. Said that everything is closed, I wanted to see tournament live now. You're in the Netherlands. Yeah, everything is closed down. But it is snowing in St. Louis, and actually that does make me feel pretty happy. Usually I'm not that happy about such stuff, but I've been missing. I'll be honest, been missing the snow. Been absolutely missing the snow. So c6, d4, d5, f3. And this is what is called the fantasy variation, 
but it's actually Marozzi's fantasy. Marozzi was the first one inventing this and playing this line. E6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop e3. All right, so I want to start from here. You get this position, and you don't know it. Then try to decide on plans, because that's really the gist of it all. And you'll see how Levy is going wrong very quickly because of this decision, what he's making. So what would you do here as black? Of course, we're looking for reasonable ideas here. We can't really go over a board. You can go bishop b4 for sure. It's perfect. That'd be a great move. B5, knight d7. You may even be able to go knight g8 because of the close nature of the position and being a French. And the knight actually has time to regroup. Not entirely unheard of. And this is also completely fine. And also castle. Like here, here, here. You can even consider moves such as f5 just blocking the king side as is. It's nothing dramatic happening. He went for queen b6, and queen b6 is per se not bad. Hey, Michiko. Queen b6 per se is not bad. However, it does one thing, and I mean, does a thing that is not great. It does not develop. Queen moves are double edged because it may, in fact, lead to loss of time. Rook b1. And here I think Levy, unbeknownst to him, I think he made. The biggest mistake he could make in the position. I wonder if you guys can even predict the move he played. And it's not like a mistake that, aha, you blundered. It's more of like, huh, this is actually a mistake. Trying to do the Simpson impression. Ha ha! But it doesn't always work. I do my best. I do my best. So this next move, the should be four would be fine. Should be four would be actually something I'd love to see. You develop. Even if you go here, great. Go here, great. But here he got very optimistic with e5. Knight d7, uh, I mean, that would close that bishop. e5. Now, e5 is not bad. But what is wrong with e5, though? What is the problem with that move? I have seen plenty of games, Joe, yes. So e5? Why do you guys think e5 is not good? And uh, just think about the principles. There's a reason I've been blabbering about those for forever. I'm not saying these things because they don't matter. It's because they actually matter the most. No double threats. No, 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 no. None of those. None of those things. E5 is fine. The move in itself is fine. It's conceptually wrong. Yep, this is a fantasy line. So this E5 move is bad because look what... Levy is doing. He's not developing those guys. Plays e5 way too early. D takes doesn't work because of queen takes e3. So uh, always look out for your loose pieces. So e5, I'm not a happy 
camper with this move because he's wasting time instead of castles. To d2, he takes, bishop takes, queen d8, he takes d5. Very smart decision by the white player. White is deciding on opening up the position with the king in the middle. He will have a very easy time going king f2, rook e1 quickly, while for Levy it's much harder because he has to deal with some shenanigans in the middle of the board. So that's one of those things in uh, chess that um, these basic principles, they're no joke. You have to follow them. If you don't follow them, you get clubbered very quickly. Knight takes d5. Then go for here. He went for bishop c4. I'm equally happy with that move. Putting pressure there. Look at those snipers eyeing that side of the board. It's quite beautiful. While Levy has actually wasted tons of time going back and forth with queen b6 and queen d8. So what I believe is important to review anytime you want to go for a match, am I getting castled? Am I getting control in the center? And I think it's way more important than people believe it is. Is there a problem going with long? Yes, because of the fact this is not 960 chess, it's illegal. Like If you try to castle here, they're going to tell you the rook is on b1. And that is no bueno. Pretty sure you're going to meet an arbiter along the way. Bishop c4, bishop e6, knight e2, bishop b4. And again, to his credit, now he's realizing he needs to do this. He needs to go for development. Now, as white, you need to... Try to get some time. Need to get some try time, and you got to be aggressive. In this case, because if Levy castles, his problems are more or less gone. You have to uh, start setting up your own threats. Okay, so you're just being greedy and, um, well, you're, you're actually not improving your position. So one of those funny things about chess that a lot of times we are going for moves that bring and take home like pawns and such instead of uh, trying to develop ourselves. Uh, Maya, um, this has been played. I mean, I think most of his games are finished, um, but we're sort of reviewing them because I think there are some takeaways that we can learn from. I hope that didn't uh, sadden you too much, though. But uh, we're still going to go on and uh, look. So nor a3, nor bishop g7 is developing. <clears throat> kind of, those moves sort of reactionary. I mean, in some ways taking on g7 is okay-ish, but you are running into some tricks. Your own king is in the middle, Scabex. So, you know, don't rush into the arms of your opponent like that. Bishop on c4 is indeed loose. That's why, that's why you do them tactics. So I would be happy to hear anything along the lines of castles. Why not? Looking into safety. Actually, Ivan came up with a better move, which on the surface doesn't look great. You'll see the point. Bishop takes d5. Takes d5. Funny move by 
levy if you take then there's takes 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 you can't really take there because rook g8 and that pawn is going to fall at the end probably this is still very good for white but i mean it's not the worst he takes d5 and there is a little bit of a difference between castling now and bishop takes d5 but for one there's no trick on the bishop second of all you don't have time to castle so this trade even though quality wise might not be the best it forces this queen to a bad spot where it will be attacked and after castles levy doesn't really have the time to castle himself because takes takes knight c7 and that a8 rook is falling so here you see the drama unfolding and this is your typical drama where it's all about development and the Benjamins. Mostly the Benjamins, but also the development. So there's no time for Levy to just castle, has to move the queen away. Queen e3, which is again a very strong move, setting up queen e5 and you are going to lose something you're not able to defend the g pawn with the piece. You will have to go queen f6, but I got two attackers. Gonna lose the pawn. Gonna lose the game. I mean, I could maybe even go knight e4, which might be a little bit stronger, but there's no real difference. We're always talking about the finest gold. So look at these little moves. Bishop d5 was very good. Queen e3 was very good. And why Levy is suffering? Well, he's suffering because of those queen moves he made. Ergo, the scandy play. With the scandy play of moving your queen around all around the board, you're losing time. Doesn't mean you're losing, but you might actually create yourself a bad situation. Talking about good situations, we are going to have a good old sub battle against Fruji who's celebrating her first year on Twitch if you want to participate in that definitely definitely join our discord if you're a subscriber let me know your chess.com username and rating and so we can win anyways after this little commercial break, you see what's the problem. Every move he made, he developed. This is what I love to see from you, 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 yes, you too. I want to see from all of you development. You don't develop, things aren't gonna get Gucci. Yes, you, Pumpkin the Cat, yes, you too. So, Queen e3, Knight d7. All right, so your goal in this position is to keep the flow going. Keep that flow going. And if you're a newcomer, feel free to tell me your thoughts, what moves come to your mind. <clears throat> There's no such a thing as a bad suggestion. I mean, technically, there could be, but if you're sort of working with a position, that's a step forward. 99.998% of the time. So, that could be a case here, too. We got rook d1. Got bishop g7. Bishop g7. We've got knight f4. Okay. Knight e4. So I'll tell you how I would attack a position like this. I'd be like, ha! Huh, what would Levy do? A Levy probably either going to move the queen here to castle long or castle immediately. So if you thought about g7 taking that pawn, that's reasonable. 
However, probably why I decided not to take that pawn because it does open up the file and he gets compensation. However, there is another weakness in the position that um, Chitko can actually try to use. That's the e6 bishop at f4. Decent enough move. He's saying, well, if you're going to castle, my consolation prize is going to be that pawn. Now I'm going to be feeling all right. Yeah, so that's good, Joe. Queen g5. All right, so why did uh, Levy play queen g5 here? Why was that a thing? Why did he go queen g5? Well, there's a pin, but uh, there is basically some calculation going on that you gotta, you know, notice and wonder about. Well, it's pinned, so it really cannot really move that much. No, Bishop G, like, uh, Levy pretty sure be happy if someone would take on G7, but that's not going to happen on an international level because it's defended by the lady. So, he is actually hoping that if you take, then he could interpose this check and then capture over here. So that's kind of the idea that he had in mind. Just eliminate the attacker and then he's just doing fine. So how can we sort of renew the threat on that bishop? That would give us some little play. It's white. Very good. Rookie one's perfect. You're over defending the queen and you're practically renewing this threat. So if they trade, you can bring your rook in and it will have a support on that bishop. It's ideal. Long castles. Knight e4. Somewhat cryptic. I wonder if uh, he could take. He didn't want to, for one reason or another. Maybe knight c5, hoping for some counterplay. In either case, he didn't take it. Probably didn't want and uh, felt that Levy might get very active. Actually, the more I look at it, it looks more real. Like, um, there is always some activity that you have to deal with once you win a pawn. Don't ask me why, it's just the nature of the game. It just happened. So instead he went for knight e4. And uh, now he's doing a little bit of a switcherewski, which might have came as an unpleasant surprise. The difference between these two kings, like this king on c8, is just too exposed. So Levy sort of survived the first wave of the attack, but sort of put himself in a worse one. Which, of course, is painful. Knight e4, queen here, c3, b7, six, queen takes. Okay, so again, I'm going to stop here and wonder what moves would come to your mind. Now, of course... White is better, but even in a better position, you ought to find a plan. You need to have a plan, otherwise, you're just going down, regardless if you're better or not.
Okay, so who does trades favor, chat? Let's start with that. Trades. Yo, Benny, thank you for the follow. <clears throat> okay, so I understand you guys are in the mood of greed, which is fine. It's okay to be greedy, especially on the chessboard. But he said that's not fine. That you want to take stuff. But is that the only thing you can consider in this position? You wouldn't want to go knight c5. Well, for one, it runs into this idea and you lose a piece. For two, every trade is in favor of the side who has more vulnerable pieces. Aqua, I think this is trying 11 months. Lurking, working. Nice. So, trades. Boo. Yeah, you don't want to trade. Now, again, there are principles, guiding principles you want to know and you want to follow, right? Guiding principles. That's what you want to have. So what is the big difference between white's position and black's? And I'm not interested in single moves anymore. Oh, the danger, nor, nor that pumpkin the cat. If you actually put in some logical thinking, the quality of your moves can rise quickly. But for that, you got to look around a little bit. Activity of pieces, yes. How about the difference of the kings? There is a key word here that I love to hear. A key word. Can you elaborate on that miles of danger? Black's king is more exposed. Elaborate on that just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's opposite side castling. Right? Kings are not on the same side. They're on opposite sides. So, Pumpkin the Cat, that's the problem. You're sort of in like, ooh, pawn, grab pawn, give me pawn. And instead, you should be thinking, huh, kings are opposite sides. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, you can think about rolling down those pawns. B4, B5. Undermine the structure and I'm not even sure if this move isn't the best. It could be the best too. And how did we come up with the conclusion of pawn to b4? Well, we just recognized that the kings are on opposite sides. So that's why it actually is worth to ponder just a little bit and not just go Ugh, zug, zug, pawn. I take pawn. I will reach. Because the pawn's value will drop and you can hold to your pawn, but your advantage will be gone. It's true. You can take a pawn that's worthless. 
So you could have taken. But in fact, uh, Ivan decided to go queen f2, saying, Hey, hey, my, hey, girl, what you doing in the middle? What you doing in the middle? And uh, that's a fair point. Now, of course, if you can choose, this is one of those important things. If you're playing a position such as opposite side castling, you want to make sure you take the right pawns. Taking that pawn ain't too juicy. It's a little poisonous because you're actually opening it up in front of your king. If you could choose, you'd pick this one. Now, Ivan decided to go queen f2 and saying, Hey, man, I can take that pawn anytime I'd like. I have no reason to rush this. Rook e8, but rook e8, not, not a great move. Not that the situation is uh, good. Already kind of sad. Indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Not a fun position. Wow, you spotted a Hungarian. Good job. Oh, Conquerors, thank you for the follow. Tactics, tactics time. Tactics time. Yeah, tactics. Get your fresh tactics. Get your fresh gambits. Up to our YouTube. Close, Pumpkin the Cat. Close, very close. <clears throat> Yep, I actually have that on our list on the YouTube. Ratchet. So do feel free to check it out. Okay, what what you seeing, chat? What you be seeing? Hmm. Alright, so attacking a lady is fun. Not great. But double attacks are even better. It's even better. Well, how is knight c5 double attacking? Bang! Knight f6. Why knight f6 is nasty? Because you can't move the queen there, I will capture you. Even if you're dreaming of this. Well, unfortunately, bishops and knights do go backwards. And it's game over. And that's all she wrote. Probably. That is all she wrote. <clears throat> so here it's not enough to double attack. I mean, if you're attacking the knight is the same value, you're not winning anything. So knight f6 and... Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Takes, takes, b4. Now, Ivan is actually combining those two ideas of realizing that, hey, my king is on this side, your king is on that side. Two, these 
really doesn't require much commentary. Bishop a7 was a nice move. But uh, there is one little detail that I do have to add. Even when you're winning, you can't really mellow out. Like when you go bishop a7, that's again like the idea. Yes, I have the extra material, but I want to get some more. Greed, my chat. Greed. I want more stuff. A7. H3 is very good. Making sure the king can hide. Take, take. Takes, takes. Queen, b5. Knight, b6. C4. The pawn is running down. Here, takes. C1. Here. Here. <clears throat> Knight, a5. Takes. Queen, b5. Now, there is one funny thing about chess. What's up, Nickens? Can we take on c4? Hmm. Well, I don't want to ruin it for you. You can read it what's on the table. There is the white player a lower and upper that is the black player. No. So I am planning to take a look at another one after this one. And uh, we may even look at some Tata if you guys are interested. If you guys are not interested, eh, that's that. Takes, takes, check. Take, the can get here, check. Our illegal arrows, but this is a better arrow. The boom, boom, boom here, and suddenly the two brothers meet again. These two brothers meet again. Which means that you actually threw away the advantage. And that's actually the funny part about a winning position. There's no reason to always look for tactical tricks. Sometimes. You can look for other ideas as well. Sometimes you don't need to do tactic. You can just chill. Like it's so easy to just over tactic and then throw away the advantage. Take sticks, check, and here a levy design. So, this was a very painful game for Levy, but I felt it was interesting for the reason it sort of forgot to develop. And that was his undoing. Like this whole game, the fact that instead of going for castles, he went for early action, and then he never really got enough time to castle again. But I want to show you another game which is somewhat on a happier note for Levy, but still I think is well worth the reviewing. Hmm. So this time he's playing white. He's playing with white here. Five here the opening we don't care about the opening here queen state knight f3 bishop h3 now <clears throat> it's funny how themes actually keep being repeated right like isn't there like a theme going on with this bishop h3 move what can we say about development so far Telling you, you can say a lot about that. He moves his bishop million times. That's correct. Miles of danger. 
Why does one move away from castling? Black is two moves away from castling. All right, so two ways and two uh, schools of thoughts. There, go ahead and try to just, you know, just go ahead and um, castle or try to punish your opponent. Punish, yes. So in order to punish, you got to find your opponent's weak spots. Exactly, Pumpkin the Cat. But how? Well, you got to find an undefended piece or pawn. If you can't, you won't be able to punish nobody. So, Levy took here. It's a great move. Takes H3. All right. So the biggest power you can have in chess is the observational power. Any potential targets in uh, Eric Lee's position? Seven and F7. Pumpkin the Cat, you're jumping the gun there. Now G5 is definitely an idea. That definitely is an idea. But that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, if you got to go knight g5 now. It's possible, but it doesn't make it the best move. Queen b3, very good, chat. Joy, very good. See, you're luring away the queen. Now, there is something that Eric Lee will have to deal with, that pawn and this pawn weakness. Probably... Here, Eric Lee should have played queen c8, but instead played b5. However, nobody expected a very agile queen move from Levy. But here it comes. Boom! Queen takes f7. Queen takes f7. And knights are lovely because they move in L shapes. And L is the best and most beautiful letter in the alphabet. Don't try to change my mind. So, king takes f7. Knight g5. King here takes knight d7 and what i really want to tell you and uh, pinpoint to you in this case is what to do when you win a pawn like this a lot of times you all start like oof i'm winning why don't you resign already well that's not the way to work a position like this because it's true that Levy won a pawn but he still has some bad pieces namely this knight on h3 is terrible and hardly tolerable so with that in mind what kind of ways can Levy improve his position and this is actually a huge difference uh, between some players like Super GMs, GMs, and even IMs. Mr. Dancing, thank you for the follow. 
they never really ease up. They always try to improve on their position. And uh, they don't care if they win a pawn, if there's still some objective that needs to be accomplished. But if you go bishop g5, it actually doesn't help you at all. Bishop f4, again, doesn't help you at all. I just told you guys, the knight on h3 is not good. So automatically, let me put the bishop on f4. Meh, 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 meh. This is still bad. Then let me put bishop on g5. Meh, 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 meh. Doesn't help you. Knight f4. Very good. You could also consider going knight g5 or knight f4. Castle is what Levy played, and I think it's inaccurate because it doesn't really go and ask the needs of the position. Knight f4 is very good because if in this case, Eric Lee goes bishop b4. You could either go bishop d2, but in this scenario, the bishop is defended. And you'll also have ideas, well, castling isn't working anymore, like knight d3, chasing the bishop away. And once the bishop is gone, you're, of course, just up a pawn, and there is no problems. But this is really the technical part that needs that love and affection when you're trying to grow as a player. He went for castles, and castles actually create some tactical chances for Eric Lee. Goes for bishop b4. If you do go knight f4, well, you're too late because he can't take, take knight e4. You're up a pawn, but there's a target in the position. So it's not as clear. He went for bishop d2, which is fine. Knight b6, b3, and after rook d8, you can see why this play by Levy wasn't the most accurate. He is now forced to move the bishop to e1, which will misplace most of his army. Of course, you can't go here because of rook d2, rook d2, bishop c3. You can't even win anything because of b4, bishop e1. So one little inaccuracy means that actually Eric Lee is getting some good counterplay, which he didn't have before. Bishop a3, again, a very good move, anticipating Levy to go for a4, which would create counterplay and would help him unravel. Bishop a3, knight g5, he's doing it now, but it's a little bit too late. King e7, knight e4, rook e8. B4. Again, completely paralyzing the white player. Takes, takes, knight h3, knight d5. And because of that, this whole position isn't as good as it was before. The reason why Levy played b3 is to stop knight c4 jumps. Knight f4, knight c3, takes, takes, rook c1. But credit where credit is due, Levy is pulling the brakes here saying, nah, -uh, I'm not going to wait till you completely overtake the initiative. I'd rather sacrifice the exchange back and then consolidate. Takes, rook d2, king d6, a5, e4, c4, rook d2, rook e4. And... Um, Levy isn't losing this because he has so much counterplay, but uh, actually just decides to finish it up and just take the draw. So what could we learn from this game specifically? The previous one, we realized that we need to go on and castle as quickly as possible. That game where he was playing Yvonne. In this one, castling was just not good enough. Had to be a bit more accurate there.
tell me. Thank you for the follow. So you have to go and look for solutions. Once you win the pawn, it's a new scenario. You got to take a deep breath and realize that, huh, will I have future complications? Maybe I need to improve upon my pieces right now, right at this very moment. And if you would have that mindset, and he may have had, had that, but thought that castling is good enough. But here, knight f4 would have been the right way of going, going knight d3, bishop d2, and with everything defended. So here, here, everything defended, knight d3 coming, he probably would have actually won the game. But it's all about being conscientious of the weaknesses you have and the targets in your position. So this is what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to wrap this one up. I enjoyed this real little bit of a review of these games. Right back.